In this question, we need to calculate the speed of the roller coaster car at points A, B, and C. Now, in a previous question, we learned the mass and the initial speed as well as the initial height of the car. And the car starts right over here. We're going to call that position position number one. And then in part A, because we're trying to calculate the speed at point A, we're going to call that position number two. Now, how do we do this? Well, we use the conservation of mechanical energy, which is given by this equation right now. We can see that the sum of the kinetic and potential energies at point two must equal the sum of the kinetic and potential energies at point one. Now, it will be useful to expand these equations, and so let's go ahead and do so for the kinetic and potential energies. And now that we've expanded each of the four terms, we'll notice that the mass appears in all four terms. And because of that, we can divide every term by the mass m, and that will effectively cancel out the masses. So we can actually rewrite the equation. Now, let's look at part A more carefully, because again, we're trying to solve for the speed as the car moves from position number one to position number two. And you wanna ask yourself, well, what are the heights at those two positions? And you will see that the heights at those two positions are both H. So when we go to plug in the heights, the height at position two will be H, and so will the height at position one. And what that means is that these two terms right here are going to be identical, so we can subtract both sides of the equation by those terms, and they will cancel out. So part A greatly simplifies in the following manner. Indeed, if we multiplied both sides of the equation by two, then those one halves would cancel. And then if we took the square root, we can see that the speed of the car at position two is equal to the speed of the car at position one. Now the speed of the car at position one was that initial speed that was given in the problem. That was the 17 meters per second. So that's it, part A is solved. The car is moving with the same speed that it had started with. Now we go over to part B and in part B, what we're gonna see is that position number two is changing. We're actually now calculating the speed at point B, which is way over here. So now the height is no longer h. We can see that the height is h divided by two. So when we go to our equation, we're going to have to plug that in. So let's go ahead and rewrite the equation that we had developed from earlier, this equation right here. So for this part of the question, again, that final height is going to be h over two. We're gonna substitute that in, and then the initial height was h. And now we're gonna to try to work towards solving for that final speed, that speed at position number two. And to do that, we might wish to double every one of the terms in this equation. So if we double each of the terms, we're gonna get some simplifying to a large extent here because this two cancels that, same thing here, same thing there, and then in the final term, you'll be left with a two GH. Continuing to simplify, we could subtract one GH from both sides of the equation so now we have the speed at position two squared is equal to the speed at position one squared, and then two GH minus one GH is just GH. And then finally, to solve for the V2 speed, we're just gonna take the square root on both sides because that cancels the squared on the left-hand side. So at this stage, all we have to do is plug in the known values. Remember, the initial speed was that 17 meters per second squared. We have G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and then H was given in the question. If we go all the way back up here, H was 42 meters, so we'll plug that in. And if we punch the right-hand side into our calculator, we will see that the correct answer to part B of this question is about 26.5 meters per second. So let's look at part C next. So in part C, we're calculating the speed of the car at point C. That's going to serve as our position number two. We still have position number one over here. Now notice that the height at point C, of course, is zero. So this means that the value for Y2 is going to equal zero. That's going to knock out this term entirely. So we can actually rewrite the equation in a much simplified manner. Now we're gonna solve for V2, and just like before, it will be helpful to double everything. So we're going to multiply every term by two, and that's nice because it cancels out the twos in the denominators of those terms. And then for the term on the far right-hand side, we have two times G times Y sub one. We're gonna take the square root of both sides one more time here. That'll solve for V2. And now all we have to do is plug in the known values. Remember that Y1 was that initial height, which was actually H. So we could have plugged that in as well. And when we punch that into our calculators, we will see that the correct answer to part C of this question 
is about 33.3 meters per second. Now, in the last part of the question, part D, we have to calculate the maximum height that the roller coaster car will achieve. So that would be this position over here. We've labeled that height H max. It's very important to understand that at that final position, the roller coaster car will temporarily, momentarily, come to rest. So it's going to kind of slide up that hill, it's going to pause for a moment, and then it's going to slide back down. Now when it pauses for that moment, then that means, of course, that the final speed of the car at that point is going to be zero meters per second. So that's going to knock out this term right here. For the y2, we're going to substitute in what we called h max. And then again, for y1, which is where the roller coaster started, we're going to just plug in the value of h. So there are the values plugged in. We want to solve this for that maximum height. So we'll just divide both sides of this equation by g. That will cancel g out on the left-hand side. And now, once again, it's a matter of just plugging in all of the known values given by the problem. Now we'll type that into our calculator. We will see that the maximum height is going to be about 56.7 meters. This is the correct answer to part D of the question. That may have been the final part, but there might have been a little follow-up question at the end. Yeah, in part E, it actually does say, if we substitute a second car with twice the mass, what then are the answers to A through D? Well, that is easy, because you will remember that at the very beginning of this question, we noted that the mass appeared in all of the terms of the original conservation of energy equation. We had canceled out that mass, and then from that point forward, we never even plugged it in anywhere. So it is evident in part E that the answers to A through D would not change. So no change to any of our answers, even if we doubled the mass of the roller coaster cart. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But please, of course, do not feel obligated to do so.